What's up guys, it's Matt, the Fruitful Investor. Now as you know, I've been investing in real estate for over a decade now, and I'll continue to put most of my money into real estate for years to come as I think it's the best investment out there. Why? because everybody needs a home to live in. And if we as real estate investors can provide that service with an A plus product, we're gonna do very well long-term. But as a beginner real estate investor, sometimes it's hard to know how or where to even start or what real estate niche you should focus and specialize in. Some people suggest long-term investing while others prefer short-term flips. Some successful real estate investors like Grant Cardone want big multifamilies, while other investors like Chris Crone want single family properties specifically under $300,000. Now, as good as they all sound, all of them have their pros and cons. In today's video, I'll be going over all the top niches to help you decide which one is the best one for you so you can start on the right foot and crush it. With that being said, let's get into the video. All right guys, so if you're new to the channel, I've been investing in real estate since 2011. I've owned over 45 individual rental properties and I flipped over 100 single family homes. With also being heavily invested in the stock and crypto market, business and investing is right up my alley. So when you're first learning about real estate investing, there's a few things you need to consider, like how much time do you wanna spend in the business? How much risk do you wanna take? And what type of tenant profile do you wanna deal with? These are all things that you need to think about before deciding what strategy is really best for you. So the first strategy we're gonna go over is single family rental properties. Now with single family rental properties, at least in my area anyways, the cash flow is very minimal. To make a lot of money with monthly cash flow from this strategy, you're gonna to need to own a lot of properties. So that is one of the cons. But one of the pros is that single family investing will almost guarantee that you attract a high quality tenant as long as you're choosing the right areas to invest in and you're also providing a high quality product, which if you follow me or better yet, if you have my renovation course below, making your properties look high quality like mine becomes very, very easy. Now, if you're looking to retire right away off of cash flow, single family investing might not be the right option for you. This niche is much more of a long-term wealth strategy. But if you're looking to build your real estate portfolio and retire in the next five to 10 years off of the equity from selling these homes, this might be the best niche for you. Getting less cash flow in exchange for less headaches and having to spend less time in the business dealing with tenant issues is really a personal choice that you have to make. Now, if you're looking to be more active in your real estate business, multifamily investing might be for you. These buildings can bring you a lot more cash flow than single family properties can. The downside is that you're likely to spend a lot more time in the business analyzing these properties, securing large financing, and more likely to be dealing with partners as this is a much more sophisticated niche. These properties really require you to think more like a business owner rather than just a passive investor like with single family rentals. These buildings also tend to attract lower quality tenant profiles as you're dealing with a lower rental amount. But if you're looking to quit your job sooner rather than later, you will need far less properties to really replace the average yearly income. Next, we have Airbnb properties. Now, Airbnb is kind of a mix of passive single family style with a more active multifamily approach as it is way more business oriented. You really gotta be savvy because now you're in the hospitality industry and it really is a business. So if you're more entrepreneurial or you really wanna be more savvy, this could be a great option for you. If you're not into that and you just wanna put your money away, like I said, single family is probably best for you, but you can get really, really insane, like really insane high cash flow from these Airbnb properties which you would have normally just rented out for a long-term tenant in your single family home anyway, but if you turn it into an Airbnb, furnish it, make it look amazing, that same house that cash flowed maybe 100 bucks a month can now cash flow 4,000, 6,000, 8,000, maybe even $10,000 a month if you're in the right area, it's nuts. Next up, we have student rental properties, which in my mind is a slightly more um, active kind of business because you're dealing with tenants who are turning over pretty much every single year, and also you're dealing with a ton of, normally, <laughs> problems with those student tenants. Let, let's be real, they're partying, they're having fun. Whether you got a group of guys or a group of girls, it can get really insane. Fun fact, I used to be a carpenter and I worked for a property manager um, solely with uh, student properties. So I was always in there fixing things and doing stuff. And believe it or not, female tenants were by far the worst and the dirtiest and they had the most fun, that is for sure. I was always at properties fixing taps, floors, uh, holes in the walls at female 
uh, housing property. So fun fact there. So if you're into higher cash flow, student properties might be for you. Just be aware that you need to treat this a little more like a business. It is a slightly more savvy investment strategy but for higher cash flow, it can be an awesome investment strategy. Next up, we have flipping real estate, which is my absolute favorite. However, like I always say on my channel, this is much more of an advanced and savvy strategy, and I really only recommend people flip once they have a $2 million net worth, which really means you've probably owned over 10 properties or more by this point in order to get to that $2 million net worth, which is exactly where I want you to be before you start flipping properties. Why? you've gone through the process of hiring contractors, flipping properties top to bottom and doing renovations, styling, attracting tenants, attracting customers. So you know by this point how business works, how real estate works. So before we get into flipping, I want those fundamental skills for you to have before you start taking risks because if you're buying properties too high of a valuation um, and you're trying to sell it obviously at a higher valuation and nobody wants to pay for it, it can get very, very ugly and you can go under very, very quick. Especially what's going on right now where the market changed so fast um, at the time of filming this video with the raising of interest rates. Like if you bought your properties not under market value and the market changes like it just did and prices start going down over two, three, four months, you can get into a lot of trouble. Me, I have a couple flips on the go right now. I wish I didn't, but <laughs> thankfully we buy our properties so under market value because we know how to get deals we know how to run a business. We know how to put the screws to sellers to make it a win-win for both of us. But one of our conditions is that we get way under market value. So yeah, the market has dropped a lot. Thankfully, I'm selling the properties we do have right now uh, for net break even, 10K, 20K profit, when I was expecting obviously 70K, 100K. Um, that would be nice, but at least I'm not losing money. I'm getting out of this um, totally scot-free. A lot of other unsavvy investors that I know got caught up in, in the rush back in January, February of 2022, they bought properties, yeah, maybe slightly under market value from a wholesaler or on the market, which is even even worse. Uh, they're screwed right now. They're in a lot of trouble. I know a lot of these uh, investors are keeping these properties as Airbnbs or just rental properties, which is not really the place you wanna be, most likely. If, you, if you're flipping real estate, you wanna flip real estate. So this is really, really can be a risky strategy if you don't know what you're doing and you're not savvy yet. However, on the flip side, is an absolute amazing strategy as well. No tenants, no toilets, no problems. We're buying deals under market value. We're providing a, a, a service to sellers to just leave everything behind, uh, to sell at a, a slight discount in exchange for all the easiness that we provide. But we get to flip and renovate properties empty, do, do what we want with it, sell it on the market. Like I absolutely love it. But very, very advanced strategy, that's for sure. And last but not least, if you're sick of everything I just said and you want nothing to do with real estate at all, but you understand the benefits of real estate, private lending might be for you. Again, no toilets, no tenants, no BS, nothing. You're just lending private money to most likely flippers like me, and we're always looking for money for our deals. So if you can find a good, trustworthy flipper that, that you wanna to lend to in your area or your country or wherever, you want to find someone like that it can be a great investment strategy to get that passive high crazy cash flow without having to do anything and for myself this is this is one of my main income streams as well i know even though i flip even though i do stock market bitcoin even though i do still real estate investing long term one of my main income streams is private lending that i lend my money to other successful flippers like me that i know so you can get some crazy high returns uh 12 percent uh, interest rates, 15, 17% interest rates sometimes, which is absolutely crazy for not doing anything. That cash flow just keeps rolling in. So if you don't want to do real estate, single family, multifamily, students, flipping, anything, uh, private lending in real estate to real estate investors might be for you. So check that out. And I have a course about private lending below, how it works, how to find these great uh, investors to lend to and all the stuff that you need to know about private lending. Anyway guys, that's the video. If you liked it, if you learned anything, smash the like button. Also hit that subscribe button for two financial videos every single week. I'll see you in the next video.